We're getting back on track here with Catherine and Emily, but as you know, we won't stay there for long because this is the Going Off Track podcast. Hello, hello, and welcome back to the Going Off Track podcast. I'm Catherine. That's Emily. It's Thanksgiving. Happy um, Thanksgiving, it- Catherine. Yeah, happy Thanksgiving, Emily. How How is your Thanksgiving not in the United States? Well, <laughs> it's been going great so far. Um, I am going to, so I have some family visiting me right now, and we are going to a big fun dinner for night uh, for tonight. So um, not turkey, but we will have a meal together of some sort. So it's been great, and it's so lovely here. I'm currently in, like, spring, summer, so it's not cold. Loving Argentina. How about you? What are you doing for Thanksgiving? Um, Well, I've been in my pajamas most of the morning, um, and I will change into other comfy clothes for our 4.30 Thanksgiving dinner call um, at some some family's house nearby. I've got the pies. They're in the fridge. Um, And... Yeah, it's it's gonna be nice. I'm I'm one of those people who is like all sides, very little turkey. Um, so I am really looking forward to specifically my uncle's candy yams. Um, because oh, no. those are it is like ninety percent marshmallow and two percent yam. Honestly, I miss like green bean casserole and pumpkin mm. pie. That's what I will be missing because tonight we're going to like a very nice like Michelin star dinner. It'll be great, but like there's nothing I love more than my grandma's like green bean casserole pumpkin pie all the sides oh her mashed potatoes the gravy oh I love it but you know that's just what you get with the Thanksgiving in the southern hemisphere so yeah yeah absolutely but it'll still be fun um and it'll give us something to look forward to before our last race weekend of the year uh I can't believe the season is already over I I know it's it's been such a horrible week, mm. uh, not week, horrible year, but not like there has been exciting things. It's been great, but oh, Red Bull, where, <laughs> you know, it's been, you're just it's ready me. for a, for a break from Red Bull winning week in week out. Well, yeah, I've already said this is an asterisk season. We don't care about 2023. <laughs> we are moving on and going full steam ahead to 2024 where hopefully there will be a little bit better competition up at the front. Not to say that we haven't seen some other great competition, especially including the battle for P2, which is actually pretty exciting that we're going to see. Yes. But we'll talk no, about that in a little agree. bit. But I'd like some more competition for like P1. Just me. Oh yeah, absolutely. I agree. So, but anyways, with that, let's get into our news of the week. Honestly, biggest headline, James Wolves is on Instagram. I know, I know. So happy he's here. Welcome to the party, James. I love it. The welcome from Valtteri Botas sent me into a spiral. I was obsessed. Because that is one of my favorite radio calls. And for him to like turn it into a welcome, so good. Obsessed. Yeah, Yeah, it was was amazing. Honestly, that's the only news that matters to me this week. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, Botas saw an opportunity and he took it and ran with it. And it was it was exactly what we were looking for out of that that moment. 100 percent. And I don't care if it was him or his PR team, whoever did it. Obsessed. Love. 100 percent. 100%. 100%. So moving to a, a different team that is in the bottom half of the constructors standings is Alpha Tauri. Um, we're getting new rumors about their upcoming um, rebrand for next year. As we know, Alpha Tauri is saying goodbye. And that means that Alpha Tauri is going to have a new name. Um, originally, the, um, the new title sponsors were rumored to be Hugo Boss and then Adidas came into the mix. Um, but it looks like like that has changed and they are no longer in the running for title sponsor, but may be involved in a different capacity. Um, AlphaTari's CEO basically said that they know what the new name is going to be, but he's got to wait until after season before they can start talking about it. The current rumor is they're going to be the racing bulls, um, which I personally think that if they're going to do something like that, they should just go back to Toro Rosso and let them do that. I don't. Yeah, I completely agree. Toro Rosso should be brought back the racing bulls versus red bull i just it's too similar to it 
no at, at least toro rosso is red bull in italian so right. it's like exactly. it's it's different enough um than racing bulls i just I, it's it's not my favorite and hopefully that is not in an accurate rumor. Um, the the rumor sites uh, and, and Instagram platforms I've been seeing it on are pretty reputable. So it might be something that we're going to have to live with. Uh, but it's going to be interesting. And uh, we'll probably see within the next couple of weeks what, it, what it's going to be like. We will see. Something else that's kind of interesting and I'm kind of like excited to see what happens um, CBS is going to produce a new workplace-based comedy set in the sports world with uh, Gunther Steiner, which yeah. I'm very excited to see. There's not a lot of like information, news. It hasn't been started to film yet, but I love this idea. I love him getting more FaceTime. I love him getting more, you know, access to the world. I love Gunther Steiner. We did a whole podcast on his book. I'm very excited for this one. Yeah, so Gunther will not be starring in it. Hopefully he, they will get him to cameo, but he will be one of the executive producers. Yes. Um, and I can just, um, like, just thinking about, like, the stuff that we've seen, you know, in the behind the scenes of Surviving to Drive, his book, and Drive to Survive itself, like, the fuck smash, the fuck smash my door incident with Kevin Magnuson. Like, I can just imagine them turning that into a storyline on the show and I just think that whatever this is going to be it's going to be kind of ridiculous and I'm here for it no absolutely I anything he touches turns to gold I feel like recently and I'm obsessed can't wait I'm very excited yeah so hopefully we'll get more news of that to come especially now that the writers strikes and the actor strikes um have resolved themselves um so hopefully we will get more news about that soon um speaking of some other team principals um on the grid uh toto wolf and fred Vasor today um and this is thursday when we're we're recording it um were summoned to the stewards and given formal warnings for the language that they used during the team principals press conference after the um let's call it a shit show uh, that was FP1 in Las Vegas. Um, and this is specifically um, for using uh, the uh, fuck word so many times and then the amount of time that they had to bleep it for, you know, TV and for, you know, impressionable ears. Um, and basically they, the, the warning, I kind of, I skimmed it because it's, in, it's in that very technical language, but basically they said that they understand that this was outside of normal circumstances, but the language was still inappropriate. Okay, I understand that, but also um, Christian Horner flicked off, flipped off. I say Ted flicked. Kravitz. I know, that, I know that's wrong. It's flipped off Ted Kravitz, and nothing <laughs> happened to him, and that was on live TV. So I know. So his formal reprimand. Like, ugh. This is what stresses me out about F1 and all of the penalties that come down or the reprimands and the formal warnings, yeah. whatever. Like, where's Christian Horner's? Honestly. I mean, honestly, his should be coming from the FCC, um, all things considered. Um, but yes, I, I do agree. Um, I think that the, a formal reprimand for them being angry is really kind of dumb. Obviously, it's just a, you know, can you just like not say fuck on the during the press conference um, type of, of warning? But it's still like, come on. Yeah, no, it's it's stupid. It's dumb, whatever. And I just... I don't know. Unnecessary. Unnecessary. Something else that came out that was like, to me personally, stupid and dumb is this whole rumor mill around Lewis and Red Bull. Like it came out that, you know, they've been talking to Lewis or Christian like reached out to him. He's saying he's never talked to Christian in like multiple years, all of this. And Max wouldn't want him as a teammate. I, this to me is so dumb. Like I, I woke up this morning um, to basically this was the only thing related to Formula One in my in my newsfeed on Instagram, um, and I was like, none of the like this is all bullshit, right? Like, like I believe Lando coming to Red Bull before I even would think of consider like Lewis considering um, going to to Red Bull. I even messaged oh, you this morning. A hundred percent. There's no way it, it would be Lando over Lewis in a heartbeat. 
it would it would be Charles over Lewis. It would be Botas over Lewis. It would be literally anyone on the grid ahead ahead of Lewis. But like I, I even I even said, you know, there there was a quote from Max, you know, excited to to be back in Abu Dhabi because he has great memories. And I, I texted you. It was like, yeah, great memories of, of the day that that traumatized Lewis Hamilton so hard that he's not the same driver uh, that that he was when he won his seven yeah. titles. No. Also, I would like to just correct your statement a little bit. You did not text me. You DM'd me. I did DM we you. we don't text. We only Instagram DM. Yes. That's our relationship. That is, that is, that is correct. Uh, maybe, no. maybe one day we'll exchange phone numbers again, but probably not. No, it's not happening. I don't care <laughs> if I live in America. It's not happening. We will only Instagram DM forever and always. Yes. Um, but yeah, and then also getting into my favorite topic that we talk about on this podcast, driver contracts. Um, I was really excited still... to put this back in the rundown for you. <laughs> I'm obsessed. I'm still a little bitter. It's not at the top of the podcast, but it's okay. Um, Logan Sargent is still the only driver still fighting for a position, fighting for a seat in 2024. Um, it's come out that Williams wants him to stay. They're, you know, happy with him. They want him to be around, but it's not confirmed yet. So this is the last race of the season. It still hasn't been confirmed. My guess is it won't come out until like January, maybe February, closer to testing. I don't know, but he is still the only driver that is up in the air. Williams still has one seat for 2024. All the other seats are confirmed. So we will see where yeah, he I ends up. I think there's a chance that we see we're, so we're recording this on Thursday. Um, I think that there's a chance that we will wake up to this news and for wake up, I mean, those of us in the you, you know United States, Argentina, um, this side of the world, wake up to the news. We could hear about this as early as tomorrow. Um, I don't think that they're going to hold off until testing. Um, and I think that, I you know, know. It, it might be, you know, it, it, I, I think they wouldn't announce it before like the prize giving ceremonies, which will be in a couple of weeks. Um, I, and I think think that you know signs point very positively with you know his performances the last couple of weeks even though you know the the Vegas race did not work out very well for him he, they you know he still qualified very well he has been better since the summer break and the fact that Felipe Dragovic who um was kind of the front runner uh, to take the seat from Sargent was confirmed as Aston Martin's reserve driver for next year taking him out of the running I think that that is a really positive sign that Logan will be in the seat next year we're just waiting to hear no I think I think you're right I think Logan will be Williams driver in the second seat next year but I I don't think it'll come out soon I really think they'll wait I don't know maybe it comes out tomorrow and I'm very happy for Logan I know we've like had our ups and downs with him on this podcast but yeah I do truly want the best for him and I think it's great for him to be in the sport in a seat especially with this new American audience from Drive to Survive um however I just I don't know if they will settle just quite yet it's a good thought I mean the real answer is we don't know we like there haven't even been you know oh, really exactly. rumors the and last couple of weeks so so the it, it's really just a, a question of you know when are they going to when, when is James Vows going to see fit to make the announcement maybe it'll be on his Instagram maybe, oh, maybe that's why he joined Instagram Catherine yeah to, for big announcements you know um Sebastian Vettel last year he joined Instagram to announce his retirement so maybe Vouse is joining Instagram to announce that they're re-signing Logan Sargent for another year dead absolutely dead yeah. uh well should we get into our Abu Dhabi speeches talk about yes. Abu Dhabi the race, let's talk about the Abu last Dhabi. race of the year yep it is it is that time the last time I have to wake up at 6 a.m. on a Sunday for race-related reasons. Honestly, I don't know how you do it because Vegas was so hard for me. I failed miserably. Like, I had to watch recaps. I had to catch up. I couldn't do it. It was at, like, 3 o'clock in the morning, which I feel like 3 o'clock is the hour where it's so, so hard you can't do it. 1, 2, maybe. 5 a.m., that's fine. But 3 o'clock in the morning is so in between everything. It's miserable. Yeah, one o'clock, two o'clock in the morning. That just means finding something to do in the middle of the night exactly. to stay up to wait for it. Five o'clock in the morning means just waking up to waking it. Waking up early. Um, yeah. 
it's like, as I typically don't watch free practice one and free practice three, because when it's the, you know, European races or the Middle Eastern races, you know, that's, you know, two o'clock in the morning for me. And considering how it did take me a couple of days to recover from completely screwing up my sleep schedule, watching all of the Vegas coverage, especially that Thursday night, Friday morning adventure, like it's, it's a lot. Um, but I don't know. I'll just, I mean, it's, it's one of those things where you just catch the recaps and, you know, then then go forward with as much live stuff as you can. This is, yeah, this is one of the last races I will see in South America, which is insane to say. Yeah. Ooh. Well, technically, yes, technically, no. I have like one third of a season next year in South America, but. But the countdown I'm is loving. on. The countdown is so on for me coming home. Um, but it's been so nice being in South America and getting these races at like a decent time. Um, cause in the U S it's much harder. So yeah, we'll a little see. bit. We'll see. Yeah. You're, you're in the happy medium for most races except Suzuka and, uh, Vegas. Yes. All right, so let's dive into Abu Dhabi. Obviously, it is one of the most notorious races of the year for what happened in 2021, which we will not talk about. Um, last year's race was um, a little bit interesting, mostly because it was continuing on from the drama from the Sao Paulo Grand Prix of that year um, between Max and Checo, because Checo was fighting with Charles Leclerc for P2 in the Drivers' Championship. Um, Red Bull asked Max Max to help uh, Checo in Sao Paulo and Max said no. And so that they were, they were very close. And then ultimately Leclerc finished ahead of Perez on the podium. So therefore he came out and took P2 in the championship, but more importantly, it was Sebastian Vettel's last race in a formula one car. It was, I miss Vettel. I really I do. do. Too. And I know we, I know we talk about it a lot on this podcast, but he was just such a good human for the sport. Yeah. Yeah, he he was a he was a great driver. Um Aston Martin did not have a great race strategy that day. Um but it you know, they they did a lot of stuff leading into it that unfortunately if you only watched Drive to Survive, you really missed out on how much they did to honor Vettel's career. Um so Go back and watch old races. Uh, get an F1 TV subscription to watch it. It's definitely worth it. Um, they had the they recut the driver's intro video um, to put Vettel at the end, which was really nice. Um, and the other funny um, bit from that race is Mick Schumacher, who had been driving for Haas. Um, he was doing donuts when the race was over, and he was told to stop, um, even though it was also his last uh, F1 race. Hopefully for now. Hopefully we see him back on the grid, but. Yeah, yeah, that was that was a little awkward moment. One thing I do have to say is like I give a lot of props to F1. They really do do a good intentional job highlighting people. Like Oh yeah. Changing the the intro video so that Vettel was last because he it was his last race and he's done so much for the sport. He's a world champion, all these things. I think it was really classy and good of them to do that. And I feel like they are very intentional with what they do. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah. So going into this year's race, we've got a lot of new names that we're going to be seeing in cars for FP1. So many. Yeah. Yeah. Every team except AlphaTauri will have at least one uh, rookie slash young driver um, in cars for the first free practice session. Everybody was kind of just waiting for it till the end. Red Bull specifically, they have both of their drivers replaced by rookies, um, which I think is is an in- interesting move that I don't think will actually negatively impact Red Bull because it's just FP1. Um, but it's interesting. Um, two of these drivers are making their F1 practice debuts. That would be Jake Dennis, who is driving for Red Bull and Zach O'Sullivan, who is driving for Williams. Um, so the drivers that won't be participating in FP1 are Joe Guan Yu. Um, Esteban Ocon, and this is actually good because news came out today on Thursday that he's feeling a little under the weather, so this gives him a little t- more time to recover. Um, Fernando Alonso, Charles Leclerc, Nico Hulkenberg, um, Lando Norris, Lewis Hamilton, and I will add for Hamilton um, that the Daily Express, which is a British paper, reported that Lewis would be missing FP1 and like buried the lead that it was for a rookie driver session. They made it seem like it was like this, like oh my God, Lewis is not driving 
driving this has got to be bad and i'm just like papers what i know that insane yeah, when I when I saw that, I was like, "Oh, this is a, this is a British paper being a British paper." I want to see how far the lead was buried, and that lead is is that it's you know a, a rookie driver session was buried pretty deep in that in that article. Yeah, no, it's wild. Whenever I see something coming from a British paper, I have to like check it with a grain of salt because you never know, and you have to read the full article to actually understand. Like the headlines are so misleading. Oh, incredibly! Like there's very few. British papers because a there's a lot of them and b most of them are not trustworthy (laughs) exactly exactly something else I'm looking forward to this weekend because it is the last race is the Ferrari versus Mercedes constructor battle for p2 yeah only separated by four points Mercedes has not necessarily done the best the last few races Mm. Ferrari also has not done amazing because they're Ferrari um so it'll be interesting to see what happens it's only four points the difference between p2 and p3 for money at the end of the season is very significant so it's gonna be interesting how that ends up yeah i'm I'm really curious to see like you know mercedes knows exactly how much they is riding on this um and they also know that ferrari is at this point doing a lot better you know Charles was on a podium um Carlos probably would have been on a podium as well in Vegas had his car not been destroyed uh by the track which is a whole other issue watch our Vegas recap and we discussed that pretty well in depth um so if if you have two Ferrari cars that are are functioning well and they they don't really script the strategy that much compared to two Mercedes cars that um the drivers are really struggling to drive like Lewis has has said you know multiple times that he's really been struggling to get this car up to speed um and that he really just wants to you know drive it off cliff um so it it, it's it it, it's gonna be real it's gonna be really close and and i think mercedes has a lot more work to do to maintain p2 than ferrari does to get to p3 if that makes sense a hundred percent in agreement there it's gonna be an interesting weekend i'm very excited yeah exactly well with that Should we jump into our predictions for the weekend? Absolutely. Wonderful. So for our poll position for Abu Dhabi, who you got? I actually have a Ferrari driver on my poll position. I picked Charles Leclerc. Oh, Catherine. Welcome to the better side of the world. Um, Just kidding. It's very painful. But I also have Charles Leclerc. I think that he's done very well in qualifying lately. Ferrari has shown that they have, like, a very good one-lap car, not necessarily in the race. Charles Leclerc cannot convert to an actual win. However, nope. he's going to pull. So, happy to meet you in pole position with Charles Leclerc this week. And then for your podium, who do you have? I Once again, I have Max Verstappen converting a Charles Leclerc <laughs> pole to a win. Lucky um, number 13. <laughs> lucky lucky number 13. Um, we, we've mentioned this before. One of the reasons why Ferrari did really well in the race in Vegas was because this was a really low deg track. So going to a track that is basically the same amount of, I think it's like a lower than normal deg in Vegas. Um, and also the, the cold weather helped. And now they're going to be going to really warm temperatures that they're you know kind of more used to. So I think that this is going to mean that we're going to see a little bit more typical of Ferrari that said I do have Charles in P2 and I have Perez in P3 that's fair that's fair I feel like this is a very consistent podium for you which I appreciate because it's it's a pretty solid pairing of the three um yeah. I too have Max Verstappen winning because whenever Charles Leclerc gets pole he doesn't win Max does so I have Max winning Charles Leclerc in second or P2 and I have Carlos Sainz in P3 I feel like he's going to come back after all of the debacles in Vegas. I feel like he's hungry. He wants to finish the season really well in P3. So um, that is my podium for this weekend. Yeah. I will add that my podium feels really consistent because that was the podium for like the first half of the 2022 season. It was some combination of Max, Charles, and Checo. Yeah. No, it, it, it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
And I just it, I just realized that. And it probably should have been for the most of for the majority of this season, but Checo kind of like had his peaks and valleys. He he had his dip and it it was a really long dip compared to when it's usually like a couple of races. This was like a third of the season of a dip. Yes, yes, yes. yes. So next we move into our P10 prediction. P10 is the last position where you earn points. You get one point for P10. So who is your P10 for Abu Dhabi? So my P10 is the same as my P10 from last week. I am picking Daniel Ricciardo again because I just, I really hope that um, he can get back into the swing of things this race and then get himself back into the points with the AlphaTauri slash car to be named for next year. TBD name for TBD. Next year. TBD. No, I think that's a really strong pick. Um, also love the consistency. We always want the best for Danny. He is yeah. such a great, you know, mm-hmm. personality for the sport. Um, I went with Lance Stroll. I feel okay. like he has been like up and down and up and down, 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 and then up all season. I feel like he's gonna end the season on a, you know, P ten note, let's say. Um, but I'm just I'm just feeling stroll for this week. Yeah, he's, you know, going somewhere in the middle. He was P5 last week somehow. Um, and yeah, this will Don't still ask him me the how, but he was. <laughs> no, and I understand that they couldn't show everything in that race because there were so many things happen and the battle for the front was actually really exciting. It was. Um, but yeah, I, I still don't understand how Akon and Stroll got to where they were last week. Um, so it was we'll quite see. a surprise. And with that, we will move into our biggest surprise for this weekend. So what is your biggest surprise for this weekend? My biggest surprise is that Mercedes is actually going to have a good weekend because I feel like they haven't had a good weekend since they left Japan, really. Oh, pretty much. I, I know that, that Lewis did did finish P2 in one of those races, um, but he also disqualified. And then all of a sudden the car decided it w- didn't want to drive anymore. Um, so I, I, I think it would be a big surprise that Mercedes has a good weekend this weekend. As much as it pains me to say this when like P2 for constructors is on the line, I also think Mercedes is going to have a good weekend. I would love for them not to, but let's be real. Um, Ferrari is probably going to shit the bed and uh, with their strategy. So I think Mercedes is going to have a good weekend and just, you know, keep uh, going and get P2 in the constructors. So we'll see. Well, we, sh- we shall see. I'm, and I, I'm really curious to see how this, this battle is going to shake out between the, the, the four drivers. I think it's going to be real, real fun. Very interesting. And then moving into who's going to do a dumb Catherine, who is your dumb for the weekend? This was really hard to pick. Um, I know we talked about this before we started recording. Like this is, it was really hard. Um, so I unfortunately am going with um, Haas is going to have another disappointing race weekend after a solid, solid qualifying session. And we can only hope that next season they have a car that will actually produce on Sunday and not just on Saturdays in one lap. Totally valid. I think they've been qualifying pretty well this year, um, but they just can't can't pull out a solid race. So yeah, um, no. echo everything. Um, uh, as much as this pains me, I have Ferrari and their strategy. I just have a feeling they're gonna, for lack of a better term, and excuse my French, fuck themselves over and just completely ruin their own weekend. They are their own biggest enemy, and it just drives me insane. But last race of the season, and then we move on to a new season. Wipe the slate clean. Hopefully, we can move forward in a better direction. But who knows? We will see. Yeah, exactly. Ugh. Well, I'm excited to see how we do with our last race predictions. I know we're all over the place with our predictions. Again, I do it in a hopeful manner. There's no money involved, so I don't take it too seriously. Most of it is, you know, wishful thinking. Um, but another thing that I like to track as well as we track on this podcast is Max Verstappen's race to a thousand laps led. So Catherine, where are, where are we with Max's potential a thousand laps led? 
Yeah, so before we get into that, there's something that I forgot to add into the rundown that I want to sneak in real quick, but it's the battle for P4 in the Drivers' Championship. So P1, P2, P3, those are all confirmed, but there's a four-way battle for P4 between Carlos Sainz, Fernando Alonso, Lando Norris, and Charles Leclerc. Um, They all have every opportunity this weekend to pick up P4, um, so that'll be really interesting to see. And then um, George Russell has confirmed P8, so there's really just, it's those four drivers and figuring out um, who is going to end up in four, five, six, and seven. Right now, Carlos and Fernando are um, level on points at 200. Um, Lando has 195, and Charles has 188. So that is going to be an interesting thing to look at for this weekend. Hopefully, Carlos can keep it. And just run away. Yeah. Mm, That's such wishful thinking, though, because I just don't trust the strategy. But um, it's wild to see who's there after, like, race one, two, and three of this season. Because let's go back to, like, the beginning of the season and Lando's six pit stop race. Right. Never would I have thought he would be in this position. Also, Fernando, who was getting, like, P3, P3, P3 constantly, never would have thought, like, someone else would be remotely in the mix besides – Max, Checo, and Fernando. So yeah. it's crazy how, like, the first race we had, the first few races we were in one spot, now we're at the end, and it's completely changed. Yeah, exactly. So that, that'll be, especially considering, you know, Aston Martin, the second half of the season just has been like so inconsistent. Like they've been in the back. All of a sudden he got a podium. Um, You know, who, who knows where he's going to end up this week. Um, so that's actually, that's a, that's another, um, thing to, to look out for. Um, and then, you know, Charles and, and Carlos being teammates, that's also going to be, you know, who's Ferrari going to favor and who's Ferrari going to throw under the bus. Kevin, you don't even have to ask the question. We already know. We know. Carlos will be thrown so far under the bus. It's not even funny. So it's, ugh, I can't, but yeah. So getting back to it, Max's, uh, Max Verstappen's race to a thousand laps led. Um, this is actually coming down to the wire and there's a chance that he might not get it. Um, he is at 951 laps led this season, which is still a record. Um, so that means that there are 49 laps to go, but only 58 laps in Abu Dhabi for the race. So basically he would need to lead wire to wire in order to reach a thousand laps led. Um, obviously there's no big deal if he doesn't make it. Um, but this is something that we have been looking out for, for you know, ever since the summer break. So I'm really curious to see if he's going to make it or not. Honestly, part of me just doesn't want him to, just so it's one thing that he doesn't get this <laughs> He didn't get. Every other record he broke. <sighs> For the Wikipedia page that no one cares about. But. Yep. Okay, Toto. Mm, ugh, I just, I can't. I, I'm i honestly so excited for next season just to get new cars and get new everything and start from ground zero. I'm like, great. You're agreed? Yeah. No, you should love this season. Red Bulls. Well, I mean, I do it. love this season, but I would also love some new cars and some competition. Like, I'm really excited for next year. Um, there's been this big rumor that um, AlphaTauri, team to be named, will be getting this current um, year's Red Bull to base their car off of. And that the cars are going to be a lot, the Red Bull car and the AlphaTauri car are going to be a lot more similar. Um, so I'm really curious to see, you know, what that does, especially, you know, Daniel Ricardo having a full season in the AlphaTauri, seeing what they can do with a car that's actually good. Um, so I am really excited for next year. And also no, the I silly think, season. Yeah. Oh my God. Next year's silly season, I think is going to be wild. I, and I cannot wait. But yeah. I'm very excited for this weekend. I know it's the re- last race of the year, but Abu Dhabi is always entertaining. It's always a great race. So I'm very excited to see what happens. Yeah. And my final thoughts are I saw on Instagram um, Valtteri Botas wearing a Santa hat, which I can only hope means that they were recording for Formula One, the F1 Secret Santa, which is one of my favorite videos every year. Um, and I love when they when they make the everybody, you know, give each other awkward gifts and also to see which drivers somehow figured out a way to not include themselves in Secret Santa. Um, so I'm really hoping that that is something Something that they are recording this weekend um, so that we can get that over the holidays. Oh, I hope so. It's always, like you said, it's always great to see and hopefully we get to see it this year as well. So yeah, those are some, some funny presents and some funny bits yeah. and seeing them well, try to guess. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 
Um, so coming up, we will have our Abu Dhabi Grand Prix recap coming out on Monday. I am back to my regular scheduled programming after this <laughs> whirlwind of horrible Wi-Fi and travel. Um, apologies to everyone involved, but we will be back to our regular scheduled programming, an episode coming out on Monday. Make sure that you follow us on socials for all of the updates for this weekend. But that has been the podcast, and thanks for going off track with us, guys.